new uh, Monica Turbinski right here baby so uh, I'm super juiced about getting this turbo together and getting the turbo onto the Mustang so uh, I'm not wasting no damn time I spend all night reminiscing on slapping mechanics because um, he used this same turbo on his Colorado and uh, made you know over a thousand horsepower to the wheels which is insane um, for those of you who do not know who Sloppy Mechanics is, you better go check him out because he is the guy that kind of got me into doing turbos on these LS motors. Um, you know, like two or three years ago, all I did was Honda stuff. I really didn't even dabble into the LS V8 world. And uh, I stumbled across his channel and, and literally um, I, I bought a truck. Like I, I watched his channel for like two days and then I'm like, fuck this. And I, I had some money in my pocket and I went and bought a truck. Uh, put twin turbos on it, didn't work, put a single turbo on it, sold it, put another, bought another truck, put single turbos on that, bought a Regal, put a turbo on that, LS swapped like three different cars, and you know, two years later, here I am, and I have a fucking Fox body, which is like his end all, be all, wanna go fast race car, get a Fox body, put an LS in it, put a bog wiener turbo on it, and uh, you'll be clicking eights in no time, so. That's obviously my end goal with the car if I keep it. If somebody ends up buying it for a ridiculous amount of money, like $12,000, I'll sell it so I can buy a dyno. But uh, yeah, so anyways, I'm running over to my buddy's house with the uh, twin turbo Camaro. If you guys don't know who he is, um, or if you guys do know who he is uh, and have been following the channel long enough, I have filmed uh, bits and pieces of his car getting assembled and we put a roll cage in it and whatever, but it's a badass 69 Camaro uh, with an LS and twin GT45s on it. So might uh, get a quick clip of that and he might have a V-band for me for the compressor outlet on this big old fucking honky. So uh, the compressor outlet is a V-band and if I welded a piece of pipe onto the end of the turbo, everybody would lose their minds. So instead of uh, making everybody else lose sleep, uh, I'll just see if I get a damn clamp. Uh, Cause you're right, I don't really want to. I don't want to weld onto my beautiful turbo. I might just have to weld a wastegate on the turbo housing instead. All right, so I'm at my buddy's house. Uh, my buddy Jake with the '69 Camaro. Um, he actually ended up having a piece of or a V band that fit my turbo. So the outlet on the end of the turbo here, he actually had a V band laying around. Uh, that we just welded a piece of pipe to so now there's a piece of pipe that comes off of this v-band here and uh your boy here tig welded for the first time <laughs> and uh tig welding is definitely an art I, I must say myself but he's got a nice uh this is a ahp alpha tig 200x and uh this thing's a beast guys um he's been practicing a little bit doing some aluminum and i'll show you some of my welds here there's one of them. There's one. Oh yeah, look at that. Pretty. It works great. The only thing that I had a had a hard time with is on the torch. You're not supposed to touch the uh, the tip here to the metal, and if you touch the tip to the metal, uh, it contaminates it, and then you know you got to restart and clean off the tip and do all sorts of shit. But I, I was getting the hang of it a little bit, um, and then the foot control, all that shit's kind of it's it's definitely an art you gotta play around with it but uh plus side is as we got this sorted out uh you guys aren't gonna kill me now for welding a piece of pipe to my turbo um and uh we'll pick back up when we get back home and we'll try to get the hot side figured out and what we can do uh from here all right guys so i am back home now and i'm working on the mustang i got the whole front end pretty much torn off i got the bumper off and i pulled the intercooler all the intercooler piping off and uh tranny cooler got that pull, pulled up and out of the way so I can mount my radiator where I want um, now there was a piece that connected from here to here that I just cut out completely so I can move my rad back um, you know wherever I want to and then I'll, I'm gonna make a bar probably to go from here to here 
or something eventually, but I'm just gonna ditch the uh, hood cable. I personally hate running hood cables on cars, on race cars at least, because uh, I don't know, I just don't trust them. Uh, I don't trust hood latches for some reason, but this car already has hood pins, so I'm just gonna ditch the hood latch and I'm gonna run the pins. Uh, and this is still pr plenty uh, strong because this is all boxed in, you know, down to here. So this like headlight area is already, you know, really strong. I can move the whole car with that. Um, the only thing that, you know, lost rigidity obviously was the hood latch because I cut this out. But now I can scoot the radiator back, you know, very far uh, compared to before. And that means that I can mount my hot side um, or I can mount the turbo pretty much exactly where the hot side is now. And even with the 7875 on here, um, the compressor housing was pushing on the radiator hose. So this is going to alleviate that completely now. Um, and it'll make modifying my hot side a little bit easier so I don't have to modify it as much. I'm just gonna kind of clean up what I have already and um, we'll get to that in a minute. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to kind of go over what I'm doing here. Um, I also had to cut out some, uh, you know, like little notches on the bottom here. I don't know if you guys can see that. So this like factory radiator support down here, I had to cut like a chunk out of it because there was a like a wall to stop the radiator from coming back. So now that's notched out of there. It looks like shit, but uh, this is this was all banged up. I think this car was in an accident or something before, but that was all banged up before anyways. Um, but uh, she seems good. I mean, it's still strong. I can freaking... I mean, it's strong enough to hold a radiator, so um, should be good. Uh, the hoses are long enough. Also, I had an issue where my uh, radiator hose was rubbing into the water pump pulley here. So with the radiator coming back again even more is going to help that situation as well. So we're killing a bunch of birds with a, one stone here. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to get the... Uh, probably going to get the hot side off next and uh, we're going to try to figure out a merge for this thing so we can get the uh, hot side flowing a little bit better. All right guys so uh, jump forward a little bit. Um, I also pulled like a lot of this wiring. This is just like the headlight harness. Uh, I pulled that like out of the way so I don't have any of that stuff get sucked up into the turbo. I kind of want to rerun a lot of this wiring here. And uh, like I said, the old turbo got it got a butt connector or some piece of wiring sucked up into it because the turbo sat so close to the radiator and all that wiring that was in there. So that wiring, you know, literally got sucked right up into there. So that's why my turbo went out in the first place. But uh, wanted to pull all that stuff up, like I said, so I can rerun all of it. And I also pulled off the hot side from the driver's side. So this, this uh, hot side had the manifold and then I snuck the pipe underneath the car, like underneath the oil pan and in front of the cross member here, or like the, you know, K member, whatever. So it ran in between the alternator and the K member and ran under there. It was a very tight fit. Uh, the bends are really tight and this hot side is not efficient at all, like at all. I built this with the exhaust pipe that was on the car when I bought it. So this is all reused old exhaust piping. And uh, I just got my new welder at the time and I just kind of wanted to play around and stick some pipes together. And I said, fuck it and just threw it on. And surprisingly, it worked very well for, you know, the quality of the kit. But I think part of the reason why I melted a piston last year and a lot of the stuff has to do with this hot side. So I figured I would clean it up a little bit. Uh, you guys can make fun of me all you want, but I'm out here doing this and a lot of people out there talking shit haven't done nothing, so. Um, anyways, so this is the hot side. Um, as you can see, the manifold that comes off of here, never weld cast to steel, whatever. It works just fine, it has not cracked yet. Went 10-1 a bunch of times. So this is a pretty nasty kink right here. Um, I don't think this is really that much of a restriction. It's a little bit of a restriction, no doubt, but I don't think this is going to limit me from making more power. The big thing that's going to be limiting me from making power is the fact of my merge for the uh, hot side here <laughs> is the car had an H pipe exhaust. So I cut the H pipe out of the exhaust. So it had like a T and my exhaust is literally a T. So the other side manifold off the passenger side comes in here and then they collide into each other literally collide right into each other and then have to get forced out this way so 
Very inefficient setup here, no doubt about it. Uh, I'm not denying it. And hopefully we pick up a bunch of power just by fixing this stuff, um, plus the bigger turbo. So uh, anyways, what I plan on doing is I'm just going to go get um, a three inch 90 degree bend and I'm going to brace the, you know, this chunk right here. This is a three inch chunk. This thing flows just fine up to the turbo. I'm not worried about this. Um, but I'm just gonna brace it. So get a piece of flat stock and brace it from here to here with a piece of flat stock. And then I can cut down here and none of this will move. Cause I want the turbo to be placed exactly where this is right now. I don't want that to move at all. So I, like I said, I'm just gonna brace it here, cut down here. I'm gonna cut here and I'm gonna cut here and I'm gonna run a three inch 90. So this side flows good. And then the other side coming off of here, I'm gonna drill a hole like, you know, up here somewhere. So that flows right into it. That way, I don't think we're gonna have any restriction, um, you know, at the merge. So I'm gonna go run and get some piping and uh, I'll let you know when I get back. All right, boys and girls, just got back from uh, the old Mills Fleet Farm and uh, picked up some flat stock here and uh, just got one brace on the uh, hot side. I just got this guy gobbered onto here. So this brace just connects, you know, this chunk to that chunk. So when I cut up here, this will stay put. So next I'm going to be chopping the hot side right here and right here. And then I have a 90 right down here that I bought. So this is just a three inch 90 that I'll have to cut and fit into there and this side will flow much more better. Much more better. Mint, mint. All right guys, I'm gonna state one thing and one thing only and that is that I am not a fabricator, but I bet you it's gonna work. It's gonna work. So, I, got I didn't really film a whole lot of it, but uh, I ended up getting a three inch chunk like I showed you guys and I made the uh, turbo manifold side here, this is like a mandrel three inch U that I made. So this is like a U that comes up to the turbo. And uh, yeah, that flow is really nice now compared to, you know, just running into the other exhaust pipe and then H pipe bullshit. So that's all good. This side's Minto Pinto. And then we got the connection piece right here. And uh, this side is uh, also Minto Pinto. You know, it looks fucking gorgeous. I, I welded that myself. I should be proud of this masterpiece. Um, and then this is the pipe that we put into the turbo manifold side. And uh, this is, just, I drilled it with a hole saw and <clears throat> running that pipe, you know, is a lot smoother flowing how I have it set up like that where you know, it just goes right into the turbo manifold, or it'll go directly into the turbo. So it'll sit like this. Correct. And with that side of the motor running, blows directly into the turbo flow. It doesn't have like, you know, it doesn't have like any restriction to get there anymore, where before, you know, we had the H pipe and then, yeah, it was junk. Yeah. So. This is just like a little bit of a redesigned, completely gangster setup. Uh, this is totally mint. Um, don't judge me. I don't fabricate. This is just for for for. This is just for sheer fun, and uh, you know we're just gonna send it. We're just gonna ship it down the road. Hopefully, go nine fifties or eights with this hot side. That would be sick. Um, and if you were really concerned about it, I was thinking about buying some heat wrap, but for the time being, we're going to let uh, all, all the glory Eagles, uh, soar here and, uh, we're just going to have it raw finish. Uh, I feel like that's how a lot of companies like their manifolds to be presented raw finish. <laughs> so, uh, for, for testing purposes only as cars yeah. and cameras would say. Yeah. Testing purposes only this is for, so just remember that. We're putting a very nice turbo on this tested manifold. But anyways, we're going to run and get some uh, high temp RTV so we can uh, reuse our old exhaust manifold gaskets because uh, I don't really want to buy new ones. And uh, the old ones were leaking a little bit because the face of these manifolds are definitely from the junkyard. And uh, 
you know they're not the flattest thing in the world so a little bit of rtv around each each of uh each of these little circles here the little ports will uh you know prevent us from having any exhaust leaks on the cylinder head so uh, yeah we're gonna cut to walmart right about now hi <laughs> Well, guys, uh, we got the. Oh, my phone's plugged in. Take my word for it. We got the exhaust. Hang on, I got the flashlight. We got the flashlight. Right. We got the uh, driver's side exhaust all plumbed up. Everything's good to go. The uh, connection down there is nice and tight. Now, all the wires are back on. Yeah. Toss the turbo scan. Now we're going to take the turbo apart so we can do just the housing so we'll put <clears throat> we'll take the v-band off so we just put the turbine housing on it'll make it a lot easier instead of trying to carry this big old fucking bitch and try to mount it <clears throat> can take it all apart because there's two clamps and the whole thing comes apart so that's what we're going to do i'm just loosening this v-band up And uh, this guy comes loose like this. Ooh, see? Scratching my paint. So this is the nut. Like that. This guy comes off. Fucking bugs everywhere. You look like you have Tourette's. <laughs> Hello, hello, welcome back to Hunter Tuned, and today I am putting my turbo on my car. So we uh, put the turbine hosing onto the hot side first because obviously it's a lot easier to get at the bolts this way. Instead of having a big old honking freaking hair dryer right here, you just got this little guy. You know what I mean? So little we got guy. we got all the bolts tight. It's not little, but we got all the bolts tight. And um, oh, dude, fuck! You know what we forgot? The turbo gasket. Oh, that's not good. Just kidding. Uh -huh. We don't run those around here. Are you no. kidding me? Metal on metal, baby. Uh, did I scare you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyways, now we're going to throw the rest of the turbo itself on. And uh, I think we'll be all done here. All right, guys, so I think that's gonna wrap it up for tonight. I got the turbo mounted up and the oil lines connected. Uh, these flanges, like I said, were the same exact from my 7875 to the uh, S480 here. So uh, I had to modify this intercooler spot too where I had the piping ran through. I had to make the hole bigger because this outlet is like four and a quarter inches. Uh, it's ginormous, but uh, got this loose so I can run my piping through here tomorrow. Get the piping ran down to the intercooler, remount the intercooler. I think I'm gonna put another fan on the radiator, so I'm gonna have three. Or honestly, I might put two, another two small ones on the back here. Um, and then I'll have four cooling fans, so hopefully this thing doesn't get hot. Um, it has a mind of its own. Sometimes it gets hot, sometimes it doesn't. But uh, I gotta remount my transmission cooler back up here somewhere. And then um, I gotta make a radiator bracket too, so. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this yet, but I'm probably just gonna take some uh, flat stock and uh, you know bend something up, you know, in order to hold this thing into place. Uh, or I might just use these little plastic tabs here too, and uh, weld like a little bracket or something that latches into here. This little plastic tab might do something with that. I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do there. Um, I gotta finish the downpipe too because the downpipe doesn't fit obviously because the V-band is different. Um, this V-band is a lot bigger. And then I'm gonna do a brace off of the downpipe like I did on my last downpipe and just brace it right to the head. So that's braced. I also got a brace down here on the hot side connecting the manifold to the turbo. And uh, yeah, so I think that's gonna wrap it up. I gotta clean up the wiring harness yet. This is just a headlight harness I laid over the motor 
Uh, and then I'm gonna redo my fan wiring too because I, like I said, I don't want the fan wiring running in front of the turbo anymore. I'd rather have it run away from the turbo, etc. But that bitch is huge. Look at this, this is the headlight hole. <laughs> sneaky, sneaky right here. That red compressor wheel is something else. That's wicked looking. What? It's super wicked looking. Yeah, Christian says it's wicked looking. No sleep for the wicked. Money don't grow on trees. Money don't grow on trees. Uh, so yeah, that's gonna wrap it up, guys. Uh, got quite a bit done today. Uh, like I said, I got my first time TIG welding here. Uh, ended up working out, so got a V-band for that. And uh, I gotta redo my piping and stuff tomorrow, do some other things. Yeah, do the downpipe. And I gotta take that block in. Tuesday, I think, because we're going to try to get the head studs fixed on it. Uh, like I said, the head studs were stripped out on this CSS GSR block. So we're going to try to get that fixed. My uh, Christian's well. block, uh, he ordered rods for it. So he's going to be doing a Viterra max speeding rods build. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, so hopefully this will all go good. We'll get to test this thing, you know, hopefully the middle of the week. Do some tuning on it see where these injectors run out because Matt from Sloppy told me, he's like, you're gonna need bigger injectors and I'm assuming I'm going to. Um, hopefully the converter holds it and hopefully this single 44 millimeter wastegate works because pretty sure I'm gonna need two wastegates because this turbine housing is ginormous. And Matt had boost creep issues with his S480. Uh, he had a little bit different cam and a six liter so Maybe I'll get lucky because my cam is in as radical and it doesn't make as much up top power and uh, it doesn't have as much exhaust energy up top. But uh, yeah, so anyways, thanks for watching the video guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hit the like button if you do. Subscribe, comment, uh, give it a like for Christian. Helping me out today. And uh, gmail.com. Huntertuned.com. Check it out, get some merchandise, do whatever you want. Don't buy anything, I don't really care. But it's cool if you do, it's cool if you don't, whatever. Okay, see ya, bye.